Okay, all right. Uh, it's not going to use for um, a scripture. There are several scriptures that will be coming to you today, with, but uh, one thought is this found in 1 John chapter 5. And I'll read this first five verses. I'm going to read the first five verses. So I'm going to uh, go from the immediate context of what's saying. First John chapter five, first five verses, beginning in verse number one. Let's read responsibly. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth Him that begat loveth Him also that is begotten of Him. When we love God and keep His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Amen. Verse 5 together. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Precious Father, thank you for the Word of God to amplify it by your power and by your grace. Let liberty, let freedom, let peace come to us in a special way by your grace. In Jesus' name, we pray, taking dominion and authority over the atmosphere, binding back everything that interferes with thy powerful Word. And loosen down the presence of a holy God that you might minister your life and your love to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Verse 4, I'm amplifying my own special emphasis here. Whosoever is born of God overcome in the world. Verse B of this chapter. Verse 4, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith. God was speaking to me briefly about faith. And he said the reason that many people are not walking in victory is because they're not walking in faith. Faith is the victory that overcometh the world. So we're going to talk a little about faith, a little bit about the law, a little bit about grace here, and hopefully as we have finished what we're sharing today, someone may find some peace and freedom that perhaps you did not have. Romans chapter 4, maybe I'll be sharing a few, like I said, scriptures today, and um, I hope that it'll mean something to you before we go right into the word itself. I want to encourage uh, those of you, there's still time uh, to see Toy if you want to be a part of the uh, couple's uh, luncheon, which is going to be held on Saturday at the Aberdeen Barn, barn at 12 o'clock. And uh, it's a buffet style, $25 per person, $50 per couple. And um, if you have not seen her, see her today, and um, we have a head count, and uh, we're going to go with those after today that have made it clear that they want to be there. So uh, it was important for we to get a, us to get a count, and so far we have several couples, 16, that have um, agreed to be there most of which have paid, and uh, so uh, the others were some of the pastors that uh, are a part of our ministry's prayer breakfast, uh, and their spouse is going to be there as well. Um, so I wanted to put that plug in. Please, if you're planning to be there, please see Toy today before you leave. Amen. All right. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Faith. Romans chapter 4, 
Verse 13 says, For the promise that he, Abraham, should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. But where no law is, there's no transgression. 16, the verse of emphasis. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Grace comes through faith. Amen. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And I'm going to pause on that portion. Faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. It's our faith. Our faith. Faith toward God. Faith in God. Uh, the promise that God gave to Abraham, he says, verse 13, was not to him, uh, did not come to him through the law, meaning that Abraham did not keep a law in order to, full, to inherit this promise. Are you with me? The, this was long before any law of the law of Moses came 400 and some years before God gave Moses the law so the promise was not based on Abraham's goodness it was not based upon Abraham's ability to keep the law because at that point there was no law to be kept. You got to get this now, very important. And the Bible says, where there is no law, you follow with me? There is no transgression. What are you talking about? What do you mean? If there is not a law, there is no breaking the law. No one can be charged with breaking the law if there's no law to bring. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So there was not the law for Abraham to break, but it was strictly based on the promise that God gave to Abraham. So that Abraham did not have to work for the fulfillment of this promise. Are you with me? And look at what he said again. Now he says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, the law of Moses, but through the righteousness of faith. Cause that they which are of the law be heirs, faith is nullified, faith is made void, and the promise ineffective made of none effect. Are you with me? Because the law works right. Verse uh, 15 again. For the word there is no law, there is no, let me say it like this, breaking the law. Look at verse chapter 5. And verse 13 says, For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed or credited or charged when there is no law. If a man is doing wrong as a citizen of the United States and there's no law that points out that he's been doing wrong, that he's not doing any wrong until the law comes. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Okay. And so... Verse 16 in chapter 4 again, he says, as a result of the thing that he said, he said, therefore, somebody said, therefore, therefore. It, is a faith it is a faith 
That it might be, that it might be by, grace, by grace be to be uh, or that the promise might be sure to all the seed. All the seed of Abraham. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. My God. All right, now you got to see this thing now. All right. Now, as I was reading the first four, eight verses in, 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 in uh, Romans, what shall we say then? That Abraham our father has pertained to the flesh is found. For cause, if Abraham were justified, declared righteous, by works he hath whereof to glory. Our good works makes us want to boast. Are you hearing me? But in order to strip us from any right to boast, God took that away. Nobody is accepted based on their good works. Nobody is actually saved by the good works. Now let me go back now. I want to back up here. I want you to see something here. He says, Well, what says the scripture? No, let me go back. Verse 2, For if Abraham were justified by works, he had wear up the glory. He had something to boast about. But not before God. Why? Because look what the word says. For uh, what says the scripture? The scripture says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. righteousness. God spoke the word to Abraham and Abraham believed the word. Are uh, you with me? Amen. No work was involved. Right. Are you hearing me? No work was involved. Says there was no work involved and Abraham believed what God said. God imputed, credited to his account righteousness. You got to hear what I'm saying. All right. Righteousness the righteousness of God is not what we do. Amen. The righteousness of God that is the, and this is how God made me see it. It is an, an imparted righteousness. Yeah. It's something that God imparted to you. Yeah. It is a gift, if you will. Yeah. Now, now, a gift can be a joke. If this was a hundred dollars blank, <laughs> and I feel like I want to do something good for George, I say, I look at George's condition and say, George, I want to, I want to bless you. I want to give you, and say, this is a hundred dollars. So I give this to George. It is a gift from me. Did George have anything to do with that as far as work's concerned? No. It was my prerogative. Are you hear what I'm saying? I did this for George out of the kindness of my own heart. Are you hear what I'm saying? So this is what God did for you and I. Are you hear what I'm saying? So righteousness has not, the righteousness of God has not to do, thank you George, with what I can do. How good I am. Now what this is going to do is clear up, free up us from guilt and feelings of condemnation. Are you hear what I'm saying? When I understand, when you understand that righteousness is a gift from God. It is not me being good. Somebody need to hear that again. It is not me being good. Somebody said, well, what do you mean? Do I do a living in that way? No, no, I'll get to that. But the important part is this. Understanding the righteousness of God. Yes. It is an imparted gift that comes from the Lord. Yes. So that George received he what was imparted or credit to him was that $100 which he did not work for. It. If the $100 was considered righteousness then George would have righteousness. Are you hear what I'm saying? Had nothing to do with George earning anything. Righteousness that's a gift cannot be earned. Now, you got to hear what I'm saying. You cannot earn this imparted righteousness. But what you can do is receive it in faith. Somebody give God a praise right now. So now, as I'm looking into the word of God, this is what the Lord was saying. He said, settle the fact that we 
are righteous. Before we attempt to build on our faith, we must settle the fact that we're righteous. There must not be any doubt in our mind that we are unrighteous. It must drive away feelings of guilt and condemnation when we understand that this is an, an imparted righteousness. Imparted by God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that I'm not being boastful when I tell you I'm righteous. Through Christ. You're not being boastful when you say you're righteous through Christ. If you have received Christ. If you have received what God did on the cross through Christ. Everybody with me? All right, now this, this is important before we build on our faith. God said we must accept lock, stock, and barrel that we're righteous. This must be as clear and as settled in our hearts if we're going to build on this foundation of Christ. Make sense, y'all? Now, let me move on. Look what he said in uh, uh, verse 5, chapter 4. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that declares righteous or justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And he goes further with an example. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputed or credits to his account righteousness apart from works. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? David gathered this because under the law, listen to this, under the law, the soul that sinned must die. David sinned. And so according to the law of Moses, he needed to die. So the prophet came to David, gave him his sin, and David basically felt that, well, I must die. He didn't say it. But before he could settle with fear in his heart, God said, through Nathan, God also has put away your sin. So Paul was using the illustration of David so that because God says David is a man out of my own heart and through the Davidic covenant who the Jews believed so much in and the promises came, they had this to boast about David, but Paul was sharing to them because the, those that had argumentative kind of attitudes that proved and disproved what he was teaching, they would say to him, well, what about David? What you got to say about David? You surely got to know that God says he's a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all of my will. So what are you going to say about David? You sure can't tell me that, that David was, a good, was not a good man. Paul said, well, let me tell you about David. David was worthy of death when he sinned with Bathsheba. So he no longer qualified. But while the contemplation of him being disqualified, God quickly said, God has also put away your sin. Are you hear what I'm saying? God justified him. Yes, he did. So uh, Paul pointed to him, and then they, they, they went on to uh, uh, he, you know he they uh, the argumentative one said 
because he used these two, David was the man after God's own heart, the sweet psalms of Israel, everybody knew that David was really God's man. And then, um, and, and, and if it wasn't David, it was Abraham. I mean, come on, Abraham is the man of faith. All the Jewish history talks about Abraham. Abraham, I'm the seed of Abraham. And, and so he was, he was very big, very revered in the eyes of the people of God. So they said, okay, well, what about Abraham? Now, you can't say nothing bad about Abraham. You can't say nothing uh, uh, because, you know, when he offered up his son, you know, that, that, that proved that he didn't. And, and so, I said, okay, let's, let's take Abraham. <laughs> let's go back to when God made a promise to him. When he was just called out of Ur of the Chaldeans, out of a corrupt race of people. God just chose him and called him out. And he gave them a word to, and says, uh, go outside and you can count the stars. He looked out there and saw the stars and so many he couldn't count. And then he says, that's how your seed is going to be. Now keep in mind, Abraham could have said, are you crazy? My wife can't even have a child. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying? Abraham could have said, wait a minute now, I want to believe in you, but you just said something kind of foolish. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that my wife's going to have a seed in uh, the child and, and, and it's been proven that she's barren. She can't have children. Are you going to open her womb? Yeah, I'm going to do that too. But before that happens, I want you to understand something. No. Abraham didn't go there. Abraham the Bible records that he believed deep down in his heart that whatever God promised, he was able to do it. It was when that was settled and when the Bible declared that because Abraham believed what God said, God declared him righteous. You see how faith works, somebody? Faith is not how good we can be. Faith has everything to do with our trust in the Christ, the God of our salvation. Because Jesus Christ paid the price that we might be free. Amen. Can I say something to you? I got a lot of gifts and God speaks to me. <laughs> Nothing. Are <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nothing. That's right. It's all about Him. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 And I'm so glad that the Bible said there are four of any man <laughs> be in Christ. He's a new creature. He's a new creature. Yes. Oh. And then behold, all things are become new. I'm a part of a redeemed race of people. Whether it's black, white, brown, yellow, Asians, African, uh, Caucasians, and Indians, and everything, I'm a part of a redeemed race. Everybody in it that believed in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, they're my brothers and my sisters. Hallelujah, bar none. We call them Jesus Christ. And none of us have anything to boast about. I know you what I'm saying. And so, I must settle now. And, I, and you must settle this day. We are righteous through Christ. Now, can I say something about that? We are not righteous because of what we do. We are righteous as a result of who we are. When I accept
Except that when I was born to the world, saw that I was a man, a young man, a good boy at the time, and that I was growing to manhood, a person could not come to me later and say, you know, you're a woman. I know you know what I'm saying. Because I knew that I was a man. Are you getting what I'm saying? None of your information could have convinced me otherwise because I had settled it in my soul. And so all of my intention and all of my endeavors moved me toward becoming the better who I am. Man. Are you what I'm saying? Same way with Jesus. If I settle the fact that I am righteous, then I strive to become who I really am with all of my behavior. So it must come out of a life of knowing who I am that my good fruit will come through Jesus Christ. It is not that I'm striving to become a righteous person so that I can be accepted of God. I was accepted. That's right. Yes. Yes. I accepted by faith. Yes. Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. That's how God sees me. And he doesn't find, listen to me, y'all. He doesn't find one fault in us through his son. Not one. We may find fault with ourselves. But he doesn't. That's right. He doesn't, I said. 1987, he said to me, he says, you are perfect through the righteousness of God. All right, let me go back again. So now if I and you are fully accepted, justified, declared righteous, as a result of the gift, then we strive to be in our behavior who we are. Are you hearing me? Yes. I don't have to work to be that. I strive as a result. I got to go further here because something happened to me when I accepted him. All right? Romans, I mean, not Romans, but. Uh, uh, Galatians says, Galatians 4, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. There's a lot to cover, but I'm not going to try to cover it. Yeah, I just want to um, uh, share a few things that I feel will be liberating to our souls. Okay, Galatians chapter um, 4. Let me get there. It says this. Uh, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor free man, female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors till the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive, might say receive, receive. the adoption of sons. And, look at this now, this is what happened. And because ye are sons, what did God do? God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, God imparted righteousness. And the Bible declares that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. righteousness. Yeah. Jehovah, yeah. our righteousness. The power of God, the Spirit of God was imparted into our being. We became sons of God. Now, how many earned this? How many did something? How many have a string of good works so that God could say, 
And I was such a good person. They're just such a good person. They just, you know, I just, they have to, they, they earned this. They really earned this, so I'm going to give them, I'm going to impart them the spirit of my son. Because the wife says, out with a suggestion. Out with a suggestion. We believed God when we heard the gospel message. When we heard the gospel message, we received it in faith, and God gave to us His Spirit. Now we are God's children by faith in Christ. When you say, well, now, how did all this happen? Well, He died for us. And when we believe and receive the message, we die too. Right? Since we died too, and he was buried and rose again, we was buried too. So, if we were buried too, when he rose, we rose with him. Right? Look, since he was our substitute, he paid the price for us to be free and since he paid the price for us to be free, the price is paid. I can enjoy the benefits of this salvation because I'm no longer held in captivity or bondage to guilt and condemnation, right? Because we are righteous, right? We are righteous by faith. That's very important. We are We are righteous. See? And that's how we have to see ourselves. Now, once we accept and embrace this, this is what God said, first and foremost, we need to accept this lock, stock, and bear that we're righteous through Him. So then, as I begin that I'm a, I'm a, a male, I'm not going to be caught doing female things, you know what I'm saying? Because wait, I'm not a female, I'm a male, right? <laughs> Same way as a Christian. If I'm a Christian, I'm going to act like a Christian. I'm going to move toward acting like a Christian because of who I am, right? I understand that. I know this. But see, if I don't know that I'm a Christian. If I don't understand that I'm a Christian, if I accept the fact, well, I'm just trying to do the best I can. I'm not. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Then what I'm going to do is accept all my failures and mistakes because I'm just trying to do the best I can. Uh -huh. But when I understand that I'm a Christian and that Christ is living on the inside of me and whatever I do, whatever uh, maturity I come to is going to be through his help, right? Yes. See, he's living inside of me, right? Yes. And God, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, and we can mortify, put to death the flesh through the Spirit, not through our help, but through the Spirit. Through the Spirit, amen. It is the Spirit that will bring us to maturity. Yes. It is obeying that Spirit of God who lives in us that will bring us higher heights in God. The Spirit brought salvation. The Spirit worked in the Old Testament. The Spirit worked through the prophets. Wherever the Spirit worked, it brought God's, God's results, right? The Spirit moved upon Jesus. And so he went all the way to Calvary. The Spirit moved, right? The Spirit moved in the, in the birth of the church. The Holy Ghost fell. And people got saved. People got saved. The Spirit moved. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The Spirit. The Spirit moved. And the Spirit that came into our spirit is going to perfect that concern. You cannot perfect yourself. Hey! Hallelujah. Yes. God. Yes, it does. It takes God. If I could perfect myself. So I said, boy, you're coming down. No, I'm trying to get a point across. God says, we're not walking in victory because we're not walking in faith. We keep trying. We keep looking at our own works. We keep thinking like a person in the natural instead of knowing Whose we are. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, Christ he is what? A new creature. New creature, all things are. That's the way. And behold, all things, not something, all things.
things will become new. God has wiped our slate clean and God is not making us feel guilty. Oh Lord, you got to hear what I'm saying. God does not do that. I spent a number of years fighting guilt. It wasn't God. He wasn't doing that. The devil was taking advantage of my ignorance. Yes, that's right. And he'll take advantage of your ignorance too. That's, right. that's why the Bible says grace and peace come through the knowledge of God. That's right? right. And it's son, the more I understand, the more I educate myself about God, the more freedom will come. Are you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. God is good. God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. James said, whoever looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues living. He being not a forgiver here, but a what? A doer of the work. This man shall be blessed. Ooh, I get excited here. Yeah. In all of his deed. Look at someone say, look. Look. Into the word of God. Into the word of God. He said the word of God is a lamp. Yes. Unto my feet. Yes. Oh my God. It's a lamp. Yes. To my feet. You know what that means? That I won't walk and stumble when I'm walking as a spiritual being. Yes. Because the word of God is a light and a lamp to my feet. Yes. Jesus said, he that follows me will not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Are you hearing me? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Once again, we are righteous. Can you say that with me? We are righteous through Jesus Christ. This is so important. I want you to leave this place today and understand. No more guilt. No more condemnation. You are righteous because of Jesus. Look at this. When Adam, first man, first head of the human race, sinned, it brought sin on the whole race. So you go back and say, well, wait a minute now. Adam, you sinned. You, you paid for that, right? You could have said, you didn't do any good. But you could say, you paid for that. I ain't paying because I didn't do anything wrong. That wouldn't help, would it? <laughs> As in Adam, all died. But that it didn't stop there. That's right. So in Christ, all shall all be made alive. Yeah. So now I'm righteous and you are righteous, hallelujah. Not because we ought to do righteous things, right? But because of one man. Somebody say one man. One man. Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus satisfied God completely. Yes, he did. He satisfied every requirement of the law. Wow. I hope that somebody is feeling freedom in your mind today because you're righteous according to the word if you perceive Jesus Christ. You're righteous. And we got to get this. I feel like you're important to you're not righteous because you're doing good. Because right. if you get fouled up, let me tell you what's going to happen. Uh -huh. The moment you don't do good, <laughs> you ain't going to do like you're righteous. What's going to happen? A little guilt, condemnation. Right? Uh -huh. Because of the performance mode. Uh -huh. Y'all hear me? Because of the performance mode. You know what Paul said? When I was a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away wrong perceptions. I put away moving by my feelings. I put away all of this childish stuff. I put it away. I began to walk by faith.
faith. And I begin to see more victories than I've ever seen in my life. Ah, oh, now the just shall live by faith. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the key over the doors and borders. Faith is the key. Hallelujah. What he says is truth. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. If God says you're going to do this, why are you fussing with it? That's it. That's right. Because the said, why are you fussing with God? If God says he's going to do this to you, why not say, okay, praise the Lord. I won't believe what he said. Because when you start fussing with God, God said, come on here. I'm trying to get you over here. <laughs> so good. My soul is happy because of God. God God has been patient with me. You know, God didn't take me by the hand. Just go, okay, yeah. you're going. He didn't do that. You're going. Was you black out? You're going. Look, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. But through his gentle persuasion. Oh my God, through his gentle persuasion. When I went into the presence, I felt like God was going to rebuke me. He didn't have a rebuke for me. He had understanding yes. to give me. Wow. Wow. God is so different <laughs> than my mom and my dad. Uh -huh. Yes, he is. And I had good parents. But God was so much better than they could ever be. Yes. God is good. And he said, I will never leave. No, but I forsake you. You're new. Your slate has been wiped clean. So no more guilt. No more condemnation. You say, well, how do I receive that? You must receive it with thanksgiving. When I gave George the gift, the natural response would be what? Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Get that now. Thank you. Praise God. Right? That's all God's been trying to show us all these years, <laughs> pleading with us every day, saying, praise me. He's saying, I paid the price for you to be free. And I can't you at least thank me for it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to beat you across the head with words. I'm trying to show you how the right response, because my thing is called wisdom. <laughs> Can we pause and have a praise for you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to know that the devil's mad. I just love him. I love to make him mad. But I like to see the hearts of God's people glad. Hallelujah. The contrast, let me finish up, the contrast between law and grace. All right, turn to Romans. I, I think I'm going to conclude with this here. It's a lot to share, but I'm not going to try. I'm going to pause. Share this one thought, I believe. If the Lord says the same, then I'm going to stop. Romans 5. When you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, look at verse 20. Moreover, the law entered... Some message won't be shared before I do that. Look at verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to what? You see the word condemnation? It deals with guilt. And by the offense of one, this, that, 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 that Adam, all right? Judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Judgment, 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 condemnation. Are you with me? Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to justification. Not judgment, justification. Somebody say justification. Justification. This is what's important. See, you can't feel and know that you're justified and be, feel condemned at the same time. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? It's either or. If I feel justified, I don't feel condemned. If I feel condemned, I don't feel justified. But it's not in how I feel, it's understanding. 
Isn't that right? Okay, so look at what he said. He said, uh, the free gift came upon all men. You see that word free gift? The free gift. Oh, glory. Hmm. Free gift. Because my say it's free. All right, so George can't conjure up in his mind and say, well, you know, I, I feel like uh, I've, done, I've been good, I've been faithful, so uh, since Pastor Aaron giving out money, I know he's going to give me one of those hundred dollar bills. That wasn't even in his mind, right? I decided to give him. It was not in his mind. It was in my mind as a giver, right? The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, enemies, God, Christ died for us. While we were in a state of rebellion, Making sense, y'all? When we were in a state of rebellion, unresponsive to God, Christ died for us. It wasn't even in our mind to get saved. While we were in a sinful, rebellious state, it was in the heart of God to send His Son to die for us. Hallelujah. Now if when we were enemies, backslidden, back God, and when he was nowhere in our mind, Christ died for us, how much more when we are his true children will he not freely give us all things? In this exciting? Justification by faith is the gospel remedy for human guilt. Because he said, therefore being justified by faith, we have what? Peace, peace with, God. with God. There's no guilt in peace, right? Through our Lord. Okay, I think I've given you enough. Let me give you this last one. All right, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more, did much more abound. Wow. That as sin had reigned to death, even so might grace reign through righteousness to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now he makes a, a little early, he makes a contrast between law and grace starting from verse 12. He makes a contrast. Now this is what, 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 what I want you to see. The law was given, the law was given to make wrongdoing a legal offense. Wrongdoing was always wrong in God's eyes. But when the law came, it made wrongdoing a legal offense. So if it was a legal offense now to be wrong, the thing that would follow is judgment, right? Mm. Because he said where there's no sin, there's no law. And sin is not charged where there's no law. What are you saying? God declares us righteous through Christ. The grace, this is what grace does. To accept the affirmation of God's abundant grace is to free one once and for all from anxiety and concern about one's salvation. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh God, by grace we are saved through faith, not of works 
restless, heavy man. I don't want to leave you hanging, but I want to say this. That when God comes into a life, he starts his wonderful work, educating us, liberating us. And I look at it like this. Let's say you bought, in, you bought a home. You bought a home, a, a used home. And this home was not in good condition. As a matter of fact, it was in bad condition. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. Look at somebody said, no offense. But a lot of work needed to be done to that home. But you bought it. You go into the rooms, just drive all the rooms needed. Sometimes mold, mildew. And even the foundation was squeaky. But you bought the home. Because you were a master builder. You bought this home. And right away you started to work in one room at a time. <laughs> you start to renovate this house. It may take you a while, but when you finish, it's going to be a brand new home. And it's going to be second to none. Right. Because you're a builder. You know exactly what to do. That's the way it is with our lives. That's the way it is with our lives. The last point I want to say this about this building's house. Sometimes there are rooms. Have you ever had a house and you, you clean it and, and you didn't have time to place everything in its right categories? So room, one room is a junk room. <laughs> and in that junk room, you got everything in there. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, when company comes, the door is locked. That means that's also that day. <laughs> that means it's off the limit. That room is off the limit. And you go around, you show them all the other rooms. <laughs> you got to look at so nice. And uh, they say, well, well, what about this? Oh, that's, no, I don't go in there. That's, that's uh, kind of off limits now. And so, <laughs> when God purchases, <laughs> He owned the junk room. Too you wanna, he owned the junk room. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we don't want him to go there, man. <laughs> I, I don't want you to go. Just can't you just do it another way? <laughs> but what God's trying to do? Go to that junk room where you got everything. <laughs> Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you can stand with me. That's a blessing because, hallelujah, maybe some of us, he, he's already gone to that jungle, but some of us, he's still got to go to that jungle because we've been, we've been, been fighting. I don't want you to go there, but I, I, I don't want people to know, you know, but uh, anyway, if, if that's the case, we can praise him anyhow. Amen. Yeah. Let's give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's so good. He's so good. Oh, if I could tell you how much he loves.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. I want you to gently just come. Let's come around the altar. And let's worship him. He's so good.